Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly uh, weekly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Uh, didn't see you guys uh, last week. Uh, I was on uh, the vacation uh, in the in the Bahamas. I was in Atlantis for six days uh, with my family. Uh, really got a chance to kind of decompress. We always talk about how important it is for, especially in this, in this, in this business, how important it is to kind of let loose and kind of breathe a little bit. So take a step back and kind of re-energize. And um, I was in the Bahamas for six days, got to swim with dolphins, pretty cool, got to swim with sea lions, pretty cool, and I got to spend $9.50 on a bottle of water. That's right, I was warned. And for all intents of purposes, let me just put it out there, a $9.50 bottle of water tastes kind of exactly the same as a $1.50 bottle of water. But again, I was warned, it is what it is. You only live once. Uh, more important is I had a great time. I got to recharge and you know kind of get recentered. So talk about the week, right? Talk about the week here. So I, I kind of glanced to I, I glanced at the markets, you know, while I was there. I wasn't, you know, I don't trade in, you know, I, I have zero interest of trading on vacation. The whole point of vacation is to kind of recenter. But yeah, I kind of always look to see, you know, what the market's doing more or less, just kind of a broad esteem, not necessarily individual stocks, but kind of just to get an overall, um, you know, synopsis of what's going on. And, and you could clearly see uh, just by the last five days of the market, I only traded, uh, I traded very light on Thursday, my first day back. And yesterday, uh, was my first full day that I that I traded for the week, um, but you you could clearly see here how uh, the market was really really in a contraction stage, and which is a, a very very ugly word. If you guys remember, we were in this word somewhere around right here. If you guys remember the old early start, and I kept on early end of, uh, end of February, early March, and I kept on talking about how it was so important to kind of not burn your mental equity and contraction channels. And again, contraction channels are there to kind of deceive both the bull and the bear. As we've seen, especially in the last couple of days, we've seen um, no enthusiasm to the upside. Now, before you turn around and say, what are you talking about? The Dow is up 269 points. Yes, the Dow is 30 stocks. Let's put that aside. Anybody who's been trading for a long time kind of understands that. Disney, yeah, kind of did, a, kind of did its thing. A Boeing, you, talk, you take Boeing and Disney, that's a huge, huge chunk. You take the financials, huge chunk, energy, huge chunk. So there's only 30 stocks. So before anybody goes crazy, oh my God, the market's up 260 points. What are you talking about? Again, if you're trading more than 30 minutes, you kind of know what I'm talking about. So when you look at the NASDAQ composite, kind of where it was right here, right? On this linear move right here, putting in contraction channels, the bulls and the bears were deceived, okay? Every single interval was represented with strength and weakness. You saw one day financials, uh, strong, and then the next five days, the financials weak. Then you see one day, uh, the technology names, beta strong, and the next five days, they're weak. And it ultimately, what it led to was kind of a line in the sand. Are we going to continue to go up in the linear exchange, or are we going to go lower and have a very aggressive move because people are sometimes blinded by the rose-colored glasses because everything's supposed to go one way linear all the time. And as you see, what happened here was a pr pretty big, aggressive uh, four or five day decline. And we're kind of getting the same thing right over here, right? We're, we're, we're seeing here shrinking channels. Okay. Now, again, it could mean something. It could mean nothing. Okay. And we'll get to that in a second. But you can see here for the last five days and distribution usually lasts for about five days where, again, the bull and the bear are sitting in a phone booth, battling it out, hitting each other with feathers, not doing any, any damage. Again, no fear to the downside no validation, no aggression to the upside, right? So you have these shrinking channels, shrinking candles, and, and this is the NASDAQ 100. So when the NASDAQ 100, when the Qs are trading, right, and they're trading in a 60 cent range, in a 70 cent range, in a 50 cent range, in a dollar range, are very, very tight, you're usually going to have some sort of element of contraction or where, where most of traders or investors call it the churn, right? It's a churn. It's, it's, it's very, very... 
it's it's always obvious when the market tops or bottoms, or at least a short term top or bottom, or let's I don't want to freak anybody out, a rounding top or a rounding bottom. Again, nobody is ever calling for a destruction of, sh of share prices, and nobody's ever calling for a euphoric parabolic move. All we're talking about is a rite of passage on short term. Uh, intervals that we can take advantage of. But again, you see kind of the churn here, right? You kind of see the churn, an upward melt, lower volume. And again, usually I wouldn't care about the lower volume because the stocks that I trade are usually the most aggressive stocks in the, you know, in, in the market, whether they have big days or not. Again, you can still see the most aggressive move potential, measure potential are always in the names of Amazon, Netflix, Tesla, Apple, you know, Roku, Boeing, Alibaba, NVIDIA. But when those channels shrink, okay, those three, four, five, like an Amazon's potential $30 uh, potential average true range gets shrunken down to like $5 to $4. And Tesla, you know, could be shrunk in, in, in any interval within 60 cents. And, you know, in the video and Alibaba, that becomes a very big problem. And you have to really put yourself in a situation. If you, again, if you go back into one of my, you know, one of my videos, probably going back to, uh, you know, probably going back to the end of February, March, you'll see exactly the same thing that we're going through right now. The only question is, are we going to continually melt up, right? Are we going to melt up or are we going to start breaking down below the five day? If you're watching this for the first time, uh, the five day moving average, you can see here just from the naked eye. Again, you don't need to be a professional chartist. As you can see here, this orange line represents um, the smallest aggression on a short-term interval. And every single time it hits the five-day line, it bounces, 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 until it breaks the five-day line, uh, takes out a previous day's low, and then you have your next move uh, to demand, which again, nobody's calling for uh, any type of Armageddon or destruction of prices. We're just giving you an, a, a way to kind of think, take off the rose-colored glasses and just understand and gravity is real. It might not affect us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, seven Fridays from now, but eventually gravity does pull you in. And if you're not prepared, if you are trading on one side with the visors on, you will get caught and that you, you won't get caught for a little bit. You're going to give back a month worth of trading in one or two days because when these things pull and they pull very, very aggressively, uh, you could get you know, really, really caught up in spin cycle. So just be careful. Again, nobody's saying it's going to happen. All we're saying is to be careful. And if you look at the weekly, right, if you look at the weekly, um, you know, kind of channel the NASDAQ 100, you can see the upward bias measured potential is 188.50s, right? That's the top of supply. And if you look at the Bollinger Band, where it got rejected in October on the weekly chart, you can see here how it got rejected uh, off the upper Bollinger Band on the weekly chart and started a spin cycle lower. So we do still have three points. So you still have a potential of a really, you know, a really methodical, slow volume rotation based kind of move to the upside for another three points or so. Will it happen? Will we go lower? It doesn't matter to me. Just pick a damn direction. And as I said this on, on Friday, you know, like if you, if you notice the moves on Friday, right, the moves on Friday, we'll talk about the individual pivots in, in a few minutes. But if you look at the individual pivots on Friday, you know, 50, 70 cents on Alibaba, 50, 70 cents on Tesla, uh, Apple bounce, 40, 50 cents, NVIDIA bounce, 40, 50 cents, Amazon, again, day two, right? I'm only trading for a couple of days, but day two, for example, right, you can see how tight this is. I mean, look, look at these channels here. You have on Amazon 149, 140. You have here 151, 140. You got a $10 range. And if it makes that initial move and it just sits there for hours, and you can see here how the 60 minute move is, you're out of pocket, right? You're out of pocket on Amazon until it decides to make a macro move. So we talked about this Friday how if you trade beta, right? You trade anything, right? Anything market correlated that you trade every single day, you are going to be. Uh, subjective. You're going you're gonna to really, really be in a possession position that you have to switch around your psychology based on this interval. Again, expansion ranges are great. You can make $20 on Amazon, $12 on Netflix, blah, blah, you know, all that good stuff, right? But contraction starts. Now you're talking about scalping, 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 bounce plays, rejection plays. And again, we've been, we've been doing these bounce plays now for, you know, for quite a bit now uh, in the live webinar. We'll talk about that in a second. 
Um, you know, we'll talk about it in a second, but it, it's so important to kind of adjust to your market. Uh, it really is important to adjust to your market uh, interval. And again, sometimes 95% of the year, these beta names are going to be very, very aggressive. Everything's all good. The 5% of the year, you have to make adjustments and kind of trade around them, tear down your size, uh, take faster, more aggressive profits, and obviously uh, always use uh, break even uh, as your stop. So it, it, it's incredibly important kind of going into this week uh, to realize two things. Number one, distribution has been taking place, okay, uh, for the last five days. You can see it, one, two, three, four, five. Distribution usually lasts for about five days. I'm just happy enough I was literally swimming with the damn sea lions for the first you know, four days of this whole distribution and I got back on the last one. And there were things to do yesterday. There were definitely things to do yesterday. And I know it sounds crazy, the Dow's up 269 points, but again, I don't trade freaking Procter & Gamble. Okay, I don't trade Home Depot. So for my world, it's completely different than what the Dow does. So, um, so I, I think what's gonna happen this week, we're going to draw the line in the sand somewhere. Okay, and, and again, I, I speak solely on the NASDAQ 100. Again, you could go through every other index, IWM, uh, the IBB, the financial, whatever you want. I, I, I concentrate on the NASDAQ 100 because, I, again, you can see where the strength is and why it's grinding people up and people are getting frustrated. Again, if you look at the strongest group, for example, in the NASDAQ 100, it's the semiconductors. You can see it. Um, you know, really, really strong group. Uh, if you look at stocks like Maxim, uh, and Clack and Amat, you know, they all did, you know, they've all done very, very well. Okay. Intel, uh, Intel, big, big move. NVIDIA is as of late, not on Friday, uh, but as of late, again, it's been grinding. You got your LRCX, but you, but you can see how small these channels are starting to get really, really tight. So that's kind of what we're seeing. Friday session, you had the Disney news, right? Disney news undercutting uh, Netflix. I'm assuming at some point, some of the Disney players, and again, I'm not really big into news. I'm not smart, not smart enough to digest news, but I believe some of the Disney players, right? Like for example, like Adam Sandler has deals with Disney and he has obviously deals with Netflix. Um, at some point, there is going to be a really aggressive push for when their contracts are up for one or the other. And Disney's model is completely different than Netflix. So for example, Mickey Mouse is on Disney. When Porn Ends Part 3 is on Netflix, they don't kind of mix. Um, so they're going to have different distributions of content. So how is this going to affect Netflix? I don't know. You know, I have no idea. $7 for, 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 um, for uh, Disney versus, uh, versus what, 13, 14 bucks, 15, whatever it is. For Netflix, I love Netflix. Am I going to subscribe to Disney? I don't care. But the point is, again, there is a catalyst and the market is, is obviously embracing it. On the other side, right, you got Netflix, okay? Uh, every single time they turn around and they say, well, Netflix is a bloated pig and eventually it's going to be trading under $200. Uh, yeah, okay, we heard about this in December and the December before that and December before that, we don't know. It's almost like the Tesla theory, again, going into Tesla. Gigafactory, Schmidtfactory, the stock's going to zero, the stock's going to 5,000. Again, still the best stock ever. Don't overthink, okay? Don't overthink. With all this, right? With all this, and if you're bare-sided and you turn around and you say, I told you it's going to zero, it might, right? If you're a bull, it's going to 500, 5,000, it might. But in these channels, guys, and we demonstrate this every single day, I trade Tesla every single day, within these channels, there's so many good opportunities. And I say this again, if you're passing judgment, you're a perma bull or perma bear in the stock, you really are missing out on just absolute phenomenal trading action within these micro channels, within these macro channels. It's just a phenomenal trading stock. Um, you know, and again, I think it's my favorite, it's probably, probably my favorite stock ever, uh, that I've traded now in the last, uh, 20 years. So going into this week, uh, going into this week, I am, you know, it's hard to say you're not bullish, right? I mean, the market's going higher, uh, but again, I am very wary of how tight we're getting, especially on this five day interval. Um, you know, look, I, I think if we start losing this five day, you know, maybe, 184.50, right? Let's just talk about maybe a couple of days of losses, right? If we start losing this 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 184.50, 
and close below the 10 day moving average below 184 and a quarter, 184, then yeah, I think we will start kind of a back test for two, three days. But until that happens, again, just look at the weekly chart. Uh, again, you want to be prepared for both sides. Just look at the weekly chart on the NASDAQ 100. It still can grind all the way to 188.54. So please, you know, don't paint yourself in a corner. You're not a bull. You're not a bear. You're an opportunist, and you should trade on both sides of the market. So uh, Friday session, again, was there massive moves, that, you know, the, the normal, oh, my God, there was so many things to do, and everything triggered at the same time. No, it wasn't that way because, again, we're in contraction. But there was definitely enough things to get you from point A to point B. And as we started demonstrated within the PS60 theory, this is just not uh, any more stocks coming out of channels. And I'll, I'll demonstrate here in a second. Uh, you know, you can have stocks coming out of channels and they confirm and they go higher or they go lower. Or you can see the power of the bounce within channels, which is an incredibly good uh, subsidized way of income because again when they, when they hit the top of the channel they'll fade you can get 50 cents a dollar dollar fifty if they come to the bottom of the channel I'll show you in a, in a second with Nvidia you could get a bounce 50 cents 60 cents 70 cents 30 cents again it's not a lot okay it's not your primary way of making money but again you're you are taking what you're knowing within this PS60 theory and you are positioning yourselves for subsidized income within these channels. So uh, let's talk about Friday. Uh, again, some natural breaks, both up and down, a uh, couple of good bounce plays. And again, I, I've said this to new traders all the time, okay? I have no problem with anybody turning around and say, well, what's your favorite book? What's your favorite? I don't, I don't use, I don't do people even still you know, use DVDs, but whatever, streaming, any, any option. What is your go-to suggestion for education? And I, I, I've, I've never discouraged the fact that everybody should read, right? Read as much as you can. There's so many free financial sites out there that you can get opinions about the market, whether you believe them or not, or excuse me, whether you, you uh, trust the opinions or uh, you know, anything, that, anything to do with financial opinions. It's your prerogative based on how you trade, based on your uh, theory of the markets, you could take them or, or leave them. But there's so many good free content out there, okay? Uh, but the best lesson, the best way to always look at the markets is in real time, okay? And uh, what I do, you know, two or three times a week, I'll, I'll put a trade, like on Friday, for example, I put uh, two trades uh, on Twitter, right? On Twitter, just to show you guys two different ways to make money within this PS60 theory, one for a natural sneaky pivot to the upside and one for a bounce play. Okay, and I did this in real time. I did this before the price action hit just to show that, again, reading is great, watching streaming content is great, whatever you call it, DVDs, whatever the case may be. But again, there is no substitute for live education. Again, we live in real time, we love in real time, we cry, we laugh, we all do this in real time. Your market education has to be in real time. That's why the live webinar is so incredibly important for natural development because you see it playing out in real time every single day. Uh, my market commentary is seven hours a day. I have personal relationships with pretty much everybody in the live webinar. We want to make sure that we're building traders for longevity, not for today, not for the trade but for longevity. So let's talk about Friday's session. Um, again, started out Alibaba. This is my uh, first trade of the day. Uh, I put this, again, this is all in the pre-market feeds, uh, in the Twitter, Twitter feeds. And by the way, if you, if you can't get to the live webinar, I know, I know a lot of you guys, uh, a lot of you guys work and you can't get to the live webinar and there's no, there's absolutely no second fiddle to the live webinar because that's where the trade of development is. But if you can't make it, the, the Twitter feed is it's only 40 bucks a month and it, you, could, you can trade it. Uh, you can use it how you want to, whether you swing trade it, uh, you know, scalp, whatever the case may be. But it's so important to kind of get your ducks in a row and really absorb and an educational process, whether it's mine or somebody else's. But it's so important to your uh, longevity to kind of stick with something. So uh, Alibaba was my uh, first trade of the day. Uh, again, we talked about this, uh, you know, half an hour before the open. Uh, Alibaba 188 is the January, February, March, March five highs needs to build. And uh, Baba went, you know, Baba went. It did what it had to do. Here was the March uh, five highs. Again, there's nothing 
spectacular. This is just a you know a daily breakout. So uh, 188. Uh, 10 and it went as high as uh, 89 79 so uh, good move there um, let's see what else we got here uh, Facebook again Facebook right before the open uh, Facebook 7880 needs to build um, yeah, again 7880 here was the here was the candle here uh, 7879 was the high here it started building 7880 and it went to uh, 7963 again it was the biggest move no again there's contraction in the beta moves. You're not going to get a three, four, five dollar move in these things when the whole group is contracting. So it's very, very uh, difficult to, you know, for, for, for that to happen. It's like sque squeezing water out of a rock. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, nothing chatter. And again, you, you can see here, I, you know, I, I wrote here, um, just scalping today, Alibaba, Apple. Apple, I took off a of bounce play uh, within like 12 cents of the lows. Nice little bounce. Uh, Tesla, just to give you an example, there's no fear, right? Just to give you an example, there's no fear in the markets, right? So I shorted Tesla. I shorted Tesla 268, 268.18s, like 250, 268.17, something like that. On the, on the, the stock goes down like, and here's the, here's the 60 minute view. The stock goes down and here's the, the 68 breakdown. The stock goes down like 50, 60 cents. That's it, 50, 60 cents. And there was like a dollar 50 measured potential. So I figured, all right, you know, if I can squeeze out a dollar 50, dollar, dollar 50 out of this trade, that's fine. It's good cash flow. I'm okay with that. The problem is with this market, when you have the Dow of 250 points and there is no fear and there's no sellers or aggressive sellers coming in, you're just not going to get the move. So stock went down like 50, 60 cents. Again, no range, no range at all. Uh, I wound up scratching on the trade. Okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, but again, at the end of the day, you can see again where the channels are. So going back into the trade, should I have taken 56? I can't, I can't, I can't personally trade Tesla 50, 60 cents. If that's your thing, God bless. But I'm, you know, I'm looking for a bigger move. Uh, unfortunately, in this interval, we're just not getting it. Um, and here's a perfect example. Again, and here's a perfect example, guys. Within, uh, I put these two trades into. Uh, the Twitter feed on Friday, just again, just to, to give you guys an example of two ways to trade within these channels, two ways to trade within the PS60 theory. And again, these are not $2 stocks that I'm buying, you know, a thousand people and, you know, a thousand people are pushing up a $2 stock. This is Disney, man. This is Disney. This is Tesla. This is Netflix. You know, you, you can't, you can't wing this stuff. Okay. You can't wing it and put your feet in the fire. You got to be you, you got to be really on the ball of what's happening here. And the whole point was uh, I wanted to show it in real time. And it was the name of the game of how the PS60 theory works and how you can process and profit on both sides of either the pure bounces, pure rejections or pure channels. So, again, Disney, you know, if it wants to dance and has to reclaim the 2870 to build. And you know, again, why was Disney? If you look at this, if you look at Disney's chart, like why was 12870? Again, everybody. Uh, everybody always looks at the top of the channel. Everybody looks always at the bottom of the channel. The meat is in between. Okay, and if you can see here, when Disney held, okay, it put in a, a put in a high here of one twenty eight sixty five. Everybody see that, right, guys? One twenty eight sixty five. And once it started building one twenty eight sixty five or one twenty eight seventy, and it confirmed this one thirty area, the stock explodes. Right, stock explodes. And again, that's the whole point of sneaky pivots. That's the whole point of trading channels that nobody's looking at because, again, the edge is when you have something that people don't and they don't understand why the price action uh, is occurring. And uh, again, here, as you can see me con consistently talking about the same thing. I have to believe beta picks a direction next week. Doesn't matter to me which side. All these fifty and a dollar moves are okay, and they're subsidizing your income, and they all up. But damn, can a brother get an expansion channel? That's right. And here I obviously joke around. People for option players buying premium. What happened to them the whole week? Uh, and here's another example. Uh, I, this trade I didn't take, uh, and, and I'm kind of kind of sick to my stomach that I didn't take uh, Netflix. If you did, uh, I was already kind of done for the uh, for the week. Uh, Netflix, this is a, a big, big flush here. I didn't take it. Uh, 353 sneaky area. If it builds below, it can flush. I, I just, I'm not sure why I didn't take the, the trade, but I just didn't, I personally didn't do it. But again, the greatest part about uh, trading pivots, nobody needs to be uh, in the trade with you. Here's the 353 right over here. 
and you know went down three dollars. So that sucks for me, but if you took it, uh, good job there. And the last thing that I want to show you guys uh, again, and, and here's the whole point of trading bounces off the bottom channels and trading uh, rejections off the top of the channel. And, you, and I wrote this on the videos at the bottom of the rising support on the 60 minute channel. Uh, 169.80s, right? That's the bottom of the channel, right? You can see it. That's the bottom of the channel here. Uh, let's see if some eager shorts get trapped and if it reclaims, could snap back up and da 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 da. Next candle later, this is what, five minutes later, up and up, and here's the bounce. And it went, touched perfectly, and it actually traded up about 60 cents into the next supply. And I wrote 190.60s is the first supply. Consider it taking some off here. Break even in all runners. Why was 160? One was why was 160 90 uh, supply, and you needed to take some stock off there because if you look at the 60 minute view, right, that was the bounce, and it traded right back to here 160, uh, 190, 66, and then came right back down. So that's the theory. That's the theory. So uh, going into this week, folks, uh, again, we have to assume ranges will expand. Will they to be determined? But again, the, the, the greatest feeling we have is being in control of our trading, uh, understanding there's multiple ways within the PS60 theory that we can profit. But most important thing is we are in control. We're trading because there's value and not because the market's open. Guys, God bless everybody. Have an awesome, awesome weekend and a fantastic trading week. God bless, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.